Ikenna Forensic has three basic components. Starting from the left side, it kind of has what we refer to as the project tab. This lists all the uh, videos that have been imported into a project, as well as information about those files. Uh, next to the project tab, we have the workspace area. This allows us to play uh, a video. And then lastly, we have the enhancements tab. These are where the various enhancement filters uh, are located at and where their settings and parameters can be adjusted to achieve maximum results with Ikenna. So first we're going to start back in the project tab and discuss how to bring uh, video into Ikenna. There are three basic ways to bring video into Ikenna. There is the basic file open method by clicking on the file folder icon. Here we can go in and select a video, select open, and that video is imported into our project. So I mentioned before, uh, basic information about that video is, is uh, listed in the video's thumbnail in the project list. The name of the video, the duration of the video, the uh, resolution pixel size of the video, and the frame rate is also listed. We can add different folders and different uh, folder groups to our folder list and we can rename them. We can then take other videos within our project and move them into other folders. This allows us uh, better management of the project, allows us to logically group associated uh, video files together for better workflow or more streamlined workflow as we work on uh, our projects. The second method for uh, bringing video into Ikenna is uh, from a device. It could be an analog device that's connected via an analog to digital converter. It could be a digital camera that's connected to our computer. We just select that device and we go through our uh, list of detached devices and select that device and select OK. Those devices then show up here in our project list and our project tab and we can select a, that device and capture from that device. The third option that we have here is to uh, do a screen grab. So this would be a situation where we have uh, a video file that will not import directly into Ikenna because it's in a proprietary format and we can install the appropriate video player, proprietary player to play that file. And then we can take a screen grab or a screen capture of that video playing within that proprietary player and capture it and bring it into Ikenna. And both the video that we capture from device and videos that we capture from screen grab or screen capture will show up in our project tab list. So those are the three main methods that we can import video into Ikenna. We can do a file open, we can import from a device, or we can do a screen grab. And all of those videos and video captures are listed within our project list or in our project tab area. Next, we move on to the uh, video workspace area. And it's important to note that uh, with the Canon Forensic Pro, we can actually have up to four workspaces open. We can add an additional workspace by selecting the plus sign and adding uh, additional videos. As I mentioned, we can add up to four workspaces. We also, with the Kenna Forensic Pro, we have the ability to harness the power of your uh, NVIDIA graphics card. It's GPU processing ability for faster processing and rendering of video, both as we view it within the player window or the workspace area, and then when we actually go to process uh, the final process versions of those clips. Another important feature uh, when using multiple workspaces is the ability to go into an undocked mode or an undocked view of these multiple workspaces. So now we can actually see all four of these videos at one time and we can uh, play these videos, enhance these videos uh, uh, separately and actually uh, view the results of all four at one time. And then when we're all done, we can dock them back together. So within the uh, workspace area, we have uh, basic playback controls. We can play the video. We can go to the be uh, beginning of the video. We can go to the end of the video. We can step forward and backward one frame at a time. We can loop the video as you see it enabled here. And then we can also select a uh, smaller uh, a portion of the video. So we can uh, go to another video here that I've already done that. And you'll see uh, we've selected a smaller portion of this, uh, this video here. We can 
clear that section and create a new one by selecting a new beginning point and new end point. And now we've selected a uh, different portion of this video. And now uh, with the loop function enabled, we can actually loop just this portion of the video that we've selected. And I'll loop back around to the beginning. We have several uh, other buttons here within our workspace area. I'm just gonna quickly go over a few of those. We have the ability to uh, control the volume within the video. We can actually jump to a portion of the video. So we can jump to 10 seconds, hit go. The video will actually jump to that portion uh, of the video. We can control the playback speed of this clip. Right now we're playing at 1x or uh, what would be normal speed. We can actually slow this down to half speed or even slow it down to one quarter the normal speed. One useful feature uh, that we can use in our workspace area is this compare switch button. This allows us to quickly toggle back and forth between the original video and the enhanced version of the video. And next to it, we also have the ability to do a compare split where we can actually split the screen in half and actually move this line back and forth as we preview our video. So we can play the video and actually move this line back and forth to see the results between the original and the enhanced versions of the video. Uh, we also have the ability to rotate the video frame 90 degrees at a time. This is very useful when dealing with uh, video captured from a cell phone uh, that's been uh, you know, captured at the, the uh, wrong viewing angle. So we can correct for the uh, proper viewing, viewing angle. Uh, once we have the proper enhancements set for this uh, video here, we can go through and select a snapshot. And as you can see here, when I hit the snapshot button, it'll actually create an orange line here on our timeline. This represents uh, all the snapshots that have been made uh, in this video here. You can see we can go back and hit our product list and we can see all the different snapshots and video clips that have been, uh, that have been made here for this particular video. So now moving on to the enhancement tab, uh, these are where all of the various enhancement filters are located at. And we have a single button at the top uh, that's labeled ap uh, apply enhancements. This is the, you know, think of it as the master on off switch for all of the filters um, that are any kind of forensic. And so by turning this button off, this turns all of the filters off, even though we might have them turned on here. This turns all the filters back on, and then we can individually turn filters on and off by selecting the on off button. And we can turn them back on one by one. The nice thing about Ikenna's uh, processing pipeline is that you don't have to worry about what order uh, filters are turned on and off or, or uh, what order filters are applied to the video. You can will automatically process each filter in the proper order to give you the best uh, uh, image result or uh, best enhancement result uh, for the video that you're viewing. So all of the guesswork is taken out, whether I need to use deinterlacing next or if I need to use denoising next, all of that uh, is, is being done automatically in the background. So the analyst doesn't have to worry about that. They only have to worry about applying the proper parameters for each of the filters. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to go back to uh, another example here, and we're going to talk briefly about uh, one of the most powerful filters that Ikenna Forensic has, and that's the resolution filter. And the resolution filter use, uses a uh, multi-frame uh, approach that several other uh, forensic uh, software applications use, but it's slightly different. Uh, many of the other software applications use a method known as frame averaging. And what this means is they take for uh, the frame of video that they're looking to enhance, they take uh, other frames of video from surrounding frames and average the information together to hopefully try and get a better understanding of what's going on in the frame that they're looking at. Well, Ikenna also uses uh, multiple frames uh, from um, uh, the surrounding frames of video 
um, but it uh, uses a different method for uh, averaging that information together. It doesn't average all of the values together. Uh, it it uh, does a selection of the best information from those surrounding frames. So as we give the algorithm more frames to look at, so in this case, three frames, we're looking at the current frame of video plus one frame in the future and one frame in the past. And then we increase that to five frames and seven frames. The picture gets clearer and clearer because the uh, application is better able to understand where signal noise is occurring from frame to frame and where uh, pixel values are remaining uh, static or consistent from frame to frame. And it's better able to determine what those values actually are from the surrounding frames. So instead of averaging all the information together, both good information and bad information, it's selecting the best information available from those surrounding frames and we can increase that uh, value all the way up. We can also apply a super resolution factor. You can think of it as an upscaler, and we can watch the numbers here at the top of our workspace. This shows uh, what the actual pixel size is of this video. You'll see as we increase it by a factor of two, that uh, value doubles. We increase it by a factor of three, that value triples, and then ultimately by a factor of four. And this allows for a video to be upscaled up to this resolution size without losing any of the quality uh, that was in the original size of the video. Uh, similarly, we have a fusion parameter, which allows us in certain cases where the background remains static uh, to uh, achieve even uh, better results um, with our uh, resolution filter and with the multiple frames that we've selected. So we can more clearly see what's going on here. Uh, we also have a slider, uh, an accuracy slider that can help us uh, in looking at things like uh, license plates or letters uh, in signs and things of that nature. And as you can see, it really brings out uh, the edges of the writing in these books here. And so that's one example of how the resolution filter can be used to achieve uh, greater results uh, compared with the, uh, the input video or the original video. We go from being able to make out that there is some type of letters on these books to actually being able to read uh, the content on the books themselves. And we can actually uh, use a resolution filter in combination uh, with other filters here to achieve uh, better results. So with this example here, we're using a combination of our resolution filter with our light and color and contrast filter to be able to see what's going on in this darkly lit room. We can play the video. And here is another example of enhancing a license plate. And we can turn off the enhancement and turn it back on. And you can see here we're using a combination of several filters. We are using our region of interest filter to focus in on the license plate. We're using our resolution filter, our light and color, contrast, sharpen and deblurring filters. And we can turn those off one by one. And we can see the results and turn them back on one at a time and see how each filter builds on the next to achieve the final result. And we can actually zoom in using the scroll wheel on our mouse to, to see the final result in this example. So lastly, uh, so now we've, we've talked about in, importing video into our project. Uh, we've talked about uh, being able to use our timeline and marking in and out on the video to uh, establish the area of the video that we're focused on that's important uh, to what we need to enhance. We've talked about the resolution filter along with uh, several other filters within our enhancement tab and how we can use one or more filters together and instantly see those uh, results when we, when we preview them together. We can turn any combination of those filters on and off and see the results. And then lastly, we can create products such as a snapshot that shows up in our product list. We can also create uh, video clips uh, that we can then export out of our project. We can go and select another project that we've created several, uh, both snapshots and video clips. And we can save those clips out. 
with our images, we can select an output format. We can select a save location. And we can save those products wherever we so desire. And likewise for our video clips, we can save those out uh, as well. The last thing that we can do, so after we've uh, created our products and exported them out, we can also generate a forensic report by coming up to our tools and select selecting generate report. The first option will generate a report for the current uh, video that we have in our player. We also have the option to generate a report for every single video uh, that's listed in our project. So I'm just going to generate a report. Now this report will uh, list my name, uh, company's name, logo, time, version of the software. It will show information about the original video, metadata, and then it'll begin with all the videos that we've processed. And the important thing to note here is that it captures the specific settings that were used to create this video. And for each example, uh, it will show the settings that were used to create uh, those particular products, whether they're snapshots or videos. Uh, we also have the option to hash uh, those files as well uh, to maintain our uh, chain of custody and uh, ensure that we're following uh, good forensic practice.